I got to tell you guys. Um, so this past week, I went out with my team. Right, we we got drunk. We had the we had the good time. Right. Oh, whoa. Um, but I came to realization the next morning when I was like, oh God, I, I need to work out. I'm supposed to work out today, and I don't think I can work out hungover anymore. Do you guys remember when we used to wake up and work out at six o'clock in the morning for football, hungover, and having to go do PRs? I mean, it was it was miserable. I, that? I can still do that. I can you still. can still do that today because yeah, my hangover's gotten way worse, way worse. You want to try it tonight? Oh God! Well, you want to try it tomorrow morning? Yeah. Or technically tomorrow morning. I can I can do that. So if for for a hangover, if I am sweat, like I'll hit the bike hard. Yeah. But I just it was sauna. Sauna's good too. I mean, then you're just sweating it out. But I just needed to get a good sweat in. <laughs> Well, I actually, I think I was a little too drunk in the morning still, so that was also <laughs> that problem. There's that problem. The yeah. equilibrium's off. You, yeah. you got the bench going and it's a little yeah. wobbly. Yeah, I, th- I think I can do it still. I mean, it's definitely harder. <sighs> I'm getting the shakes right now thinking about it. I just prefer not to. I'd rather just, you know, sleep in. Like, why? Why do I need to get up hungover? Let me just sleep it off. I'm not a sleeping guy, though, so. Yeah, it's tough to sleep in. Yeah. When you sleep in, how late do you sleep? After a bender? <laughs> yeah. Any day. Well, I mean, give us a probably bender and a non-bender. Probably like 10. You can sleep Ooh. till 10. What time are you going to bed? If, 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 if it's, it's a bender, a bender it's, it's probably like 3. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, On so a normal, like a normal Saturday now, I'm probably up about 7.30. Like on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Just a normal night. Just a normal, regular. Yeah. Seven Even if we have block. a bender, though, I, my body just doesn't want to wake up after, like, after 8. I am already up. There's like, just no way. I, I can't sleep past eight. You're, you're just tossing up. and turning and like your mind's racing. I just, like you're up. I can't. I you said what I'm capable of doing. Typically what happens is we have something else planned the next day and we're still up by Room. eight Air o'clock. The dog. Yeah. What? When we were in Vegas, didn't you guys go work out at we like did. the Crocodon? Some. Crocodon? I slept. <laughs> hey, dude. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. When we were in Vegas, I actually didn't see Johnny sleep for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny did not sleep for five minutes. I did not Vegas. sleep. No, it's a great place. I believe the dealer tried to schedule you a flight home. Was that accurate? Listen, let's not talk about that. All right, sorry. <laughs> Back to fitness. Do you, do you think? Do you think the workout helps the hangover though? If you yes. were to just push through it, unfortunately, oh, yeah. get the hundred percent. My, my brother says the term "sweat out the demons," and I absolutely love it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. I still don't know. The jury's out on that one for me. Like you don't it doesn't make you feel better? I don't know. I guess I don't have much of a scientific test going on here to, to really prove it or not, but Yeah, no, it, it definitely helps unless I'm on the verge of puking. Then Kenny, you're on the verge of puking like regularly. Yeah. But <laughs> I could probably All right. Well know. speaking of puking, how often have you guys gone so hard in the gym that it actually made you puke? Mm. I've done that like way too many times. Do you do that now, right? Um, like, I mean, I haven't done it in a little while. The other day, I thought I was going to, but I think it's just because I hit like when I, right now, I'm hitting the gym super early, and I'm not waking up at like three thirty to get a meal in, and then do that. So I'm going just straight from waking up. I'll drink like you know greens, and then I'll go to the gym. And I the pre workout. If I do pre workout, hard pre workout without having anything yeah. in my body. And then I increase my heart rate enough. I will. I will throw up. Interesting. So, I yeah. Pre- I prefer to like just work out on an empty stomach instead of like it outside of pre workout. But that's when I get kind of weird because if I'm working out super hard, like I hit legs pretty heavy the other day, and like you know fifth set of squats, I was feeling like kind of like you know shaky, and I kept going through things and whatnot. But the one thing that I noticed was the more I kept doing it, and the just I think it was just beating myself up. And then I just felt like ass after. So I don't know. Just well, looking at the much. physical specimen that I obviously am, it's not surprising the answer to this question for me is zero. I've never actually puked from working out. Ever? Not in college once. Even when it, we, I was I was close on some of those sprint days, but I never we had actually, to go to the fence. The yeah, fence. We, the fence, but never never had to puke. But running for Good me for has you. never really been the problem. Like, what about when we did? What's the thing called with like the? 100 squats or whatever. The Grim Got, Reaper. The Grim, Grim Reaper. Reaper. You didn't have to... I, I mean, close. That was like the closest. Yeah, I've close, ever. but never... It's Keep actually squatting. happened for me. Oh, I've done it. So you're you saying you have, Johnny? I ha- like doing cleans and, and jerks like back in the day, yeah. That's I mean, I don't right. do that you anymore. You did a lot of that stuff in high school. Yeah. Uh, there was a Facebook high post was... recently where 
I think you you had it up, and it was my knees already hurt, and you were doing cleans. Yep. And then our former athletic trainer <laughs> was like, something about you used to have bad. That was when you had bad hips yeah. instead of knees or something. That was. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a throwback. That was like 2014, yeah, 15. That was cool. Co- Andrew commented on it. that. Was it? Yeah, quite the, the beard. K man, Kavachi. I was also wearing glasses during that too. Yeah. Yes, you were. That was <laughs> weird. Yeah. All right, working, Dude, I was blind. Working out with glasses. I abs- never. I'm not a big fan of it. You no. obviously. I mean, have done it. Yeah, but that was when I was like really, really blind. So you're not really, really blind. I mean, anymore. I wear contacts now. <laughs> I didn't wear contacts back then. Yeah, remember, you had the contact issue. I, yeah. yeah. Sleeping in them. Yeah. Um, I've only, <laughs> I've only uh, puked once, and it was a fence day. We, we we were we worked out, and I don't know. I guess we were acting out, and Loki said, "All right, everyone outside right now, run to the fence." When I came back, it was a second one because we did it twice that yeah. day. And I came back, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is it. This is the moment." And what, I hate throwing up, so like in general. But, what time well, was your workout? I usually had the extremely early. Uh, morning workout that was either what five or six yeah something like that because we always i think i was at 6 a.m my group mm-hmm. and i remember always walking from the parking lot coming down and seeing you guys run to the fence i'm like oh this is gonna well, be a hell i don't of a think workout. there was ever a five i thought it was six seven and eight okay yeah, maybe it was six, like seven, i just always had that early one. yeah <clears throat> i think you and i had the 7 a.m and we were the racks diagonal with yeah. each other i'll never forget though i think it was it maybe in like a, a halloween or something like that but we had two PR for cleans and we yes. went out the night before and I'm like out, out. And, uh, one of the guys was in the locker room wearing a banana suit. <laughs> was it Halloween or was it, I thought it was your 21st. I think it was my 21st birthday. I don't remember. I just remember. The I banana. think it was 20. <laughs> I think it was Johnny's 21st. We hit the town cause it was like a, a Wednesday night. It was a random night, which is why we had PRs the next day during the week. And yeah. we are. Well, no, we didn't know we were doing PR. We did not. We came in. Yes, that we didn't is correct. know. We did it was supposed to be like a, a stretch and like core day or something, which is why we went out. We're like, oh, we, we yeah, they wouldn't get structure this. a PR day on a Saturday. No. We know better than to do that. Right. And we did well though. We got through it. Yeah, yeah I, I hit my PR. I actually think I hit my PR that day. I'm clean and clean but I mean, all we did was just Bench load up soft. on pre workout and just <laughs> oh, get after God. it. Yeah. So I mean, you still but that you was still a take pre workout. I don't take pre workout. You don't anymore. take pre workout? Do any of you guys take pre workout? I, yeah. I can't. Well, I, I have blood pressure. And I've whatnot. noticed because of my blood pressure issues that pre workout just. I don't want to pop blood vessels and have an aneurysm and all that. Does Celsius or coffee count as like using that as a pre workout? Well, I would think like, see, pre workouts, if you're buying the supplement, there's massive amounts of stimulants in that, right? Yeah. I mean, you're seeing like everything from. Caffeine intake is definitely the most thing, but you're seeing from taurine to beta alanine and you know carbs, proteins, everything. Creatine's like, a big there's one. Creatine. There's so much shit in these things. For me, I just don't take it. I mean, I was getting like I was taking literally the strongest stuff that's out there, and it was like 500 milligrams of caffeine at one point in, right. like, in a pre workout. And does it work? I mean, yeah, it worked. But I just think that it's probably not the healthier decision. And now later. I'm not trying to PR and deadlift 685, True. right? I'm like trying to go in there and have a good workout and not not gain weight and fit. So it's just different. You're going right to where I wanted to head, Kenny. I want to talk about our fitness journeys because ego lifting is out for me these days. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. No. But back in the day when we started, which is probably when we had the worst form and like we didn't know what the hell we were doing. And yeah. man, I'm surprised. I mean, just because you're younger, you're a little bit more resilient. You're, you're, you recover better. But like... If I were to try to do that now, oh my, I would be so hurt. I still hurt myself now, but you know, I don't know. It, your guys, you guys basically all started with sports. That's kind of in the fitness area. So, you know, I was soccer. That was my first sport. Let's go back to ego lifting for a second. Okay. I have a story for James, which is oh, post, come post on. college. Can we just get to that later? No, we're post college. We were at the YMCA at probably six in the morning before work. And it wasn't even PR day, but we're benching and we're on the heavier side. And James, don't remember how many reps, but he crushes it. Like he's talking to himself mid and he's like easy money, slight work. So I'm not trying to help him because he's got it. And he goes to racket and he misses the rack. I missed the right side. Left side or right side? (laughs) Right side. So it's not clipped. It all goes one way. Thank God, because I've probably probably been way worse. Correct. All the weight falls off. It was like 225, I think, or... I'm going to uh, say 225 going off memory. Whatever. He crushed it. 350. 
Right. No chance. They fall off to the right. Huge loud noise wakes everyone up. But then the bar has to shift, yeah. fall to the left. Another huge loud noise. And everyone in the Y just looking at us thinking that the spotter fucked up, which he did not. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just, oh, these kids in here, they don't know how to lift. I mean, he did great. He just missed the rack. But it was great because he's like, easy money. And then the chaos this ensued. Post-college or during college? Post. Post. Okay. About two years out, maybe? Two or three. Oh, this is when you guys were going to the Y. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not the one with the pool over by Winter Winter Park. Yeah, this was Winter Park one. Okay. That's tough. I mean, I've missing the rack is tough. Missing the rack on a heavy squat oh. is really mm. terrible because you have a long way down. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's probably never never like a better circumstance. It's either going to drop on your chest or you're going down like ass to the grass. I would probably rather a squat one. It just depends. Only because I feel like I can escape better. If it's bench, man, I think falls in your fucking face. Ooh. Have you yeah. ever, when I was your, young. Your neck, your throat. When I was I've young. I've seen videos and it's scary. I was like, um, I don't know, probably like 16. And uh, my dad got me my first bench. And we put it in our basement. And I'm benching. And like, no one's down there with me. I'm benching. It's like, I don't know, probably like 95 pounds. You know, I was, I was 16. But I got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was downstairs in my basement by myself. And then, have, has that ever happened to you? I like, oh I had to like roll, roll it, it down. Yeah. And then you sit up, and then you like basically right when it gets to your hips, it starts to hurt. Yeah. That like <laughs> that bad. adrenaline kicks in. Like I am not dying under this bench right now. I so I did, I'll be brief on this one, but uh, I did that recently at my home gym, and I had the AirPods in, and so I realized, oh my gosh, I can go. Hey Siri, call Lydia. So I did that because I needed someone to help me. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker was asleep. Oh, uh, no. I was so butthurt. I was like, I'm a genius. Yes. Hey, Siri, call Lydia. And it was ringing and ringing. I'm like, oh my God, she's asleep. It was like nine o'clock. Um, so I did the, I rolled it down. But yeah, the, the only way to, to live through that is just roll it down, honestly. Yeah. Or, or you can go no clips intentionally and then try to, you know, dip like you did in YMCA. But. To your original point, uh, James, the Fit, what, what you brought journey. up, like, curious to hear from you all, you know, what that journey's looked like, especially starting like from high school, college, and what you guys do now. Obviously, you got real jobs, life, real priorities, mm-hmm. and that that definitely changes your outlook and approach for sure. Yeah, I think that when you're in sports, um, whether it doesn't matter what sports program you're in, whatever type of program you're in, if if it's a high school or if it's college or even middle school, if you have um, a program with an athletic team, typically they build out the plan for you. And they they, they give you a sheet or they give you a program and you go into the gym and you just, you do your lifts and then you leave. And that structure really helps you, right? So that was incorporated for, for me, for until we were in college, right? You, you didn't have to go in and build yourself a program. I mean, literally, you just followed a regimen. And then post career or post like athletics, then you start having to build yourself a fitness plan, which becomes a little bit more difficult because it depends on your journey, what you're trying to do. What I was doing in, you know, athletics was definitely not the same thing I was doing when I was in powerlifting. Mm-hmm. I literally cut almost all cardio related things in powerlifting. And I focus like I would deadlift and sit there for five minutes. And then I deadlift and sit there for five minutes. And then I when I went to CrossFit after that. Uh, that killed me because I literally had no cardio. Mm-hmm. So we were doing light weights, but then they were like, okay, go, go run a mile after you do, you know, hang cleans at 135. 135 on hang cleans is easy, but then when you're running and then you're going to do it again and again and again, it's, it's challenging. So mm-hmm. that's a really big difficulty. Now on my fitness journey, I do a little bit of, of everything. So I do, I'll do legs. I do a heavy day legs on Monday. I do a heavy day push on Tuesday. Heavy day pull on Wednesday, a light day legs with more, uh, when I say light, it's still medium weight, but I'm increasing rep volume and, and mm-hmm. set volume. And then I do a light push day on Thursday, uh, on Friday, a light pull day on Saturday, and then a full cardio day on Sunday. And I just keep going. So right now I'm not stopping at all. I'm not, I'm just seven days a week going to the gym. Just well, how long, like you're in the middle of a program, right? With the seven days a week, you're doing like a hundred days or something. So I'm, I said I'm going to do 100 days straight. But really what I think is my goal with that was I woke up one day and I said, 
I, I was struggling because it when you are in business, you have so many other things that you're thinking about. And I was just flipping between going in the morning, going, going at the end there. of the day, going yeah. in the morning, going at the end of the day. And the end of the day situation is never good because business gets in the way and calls pop up and things just happen. And then you can't get to the gym. And then you use that as an excuse to say, oh, you know, tomorrow. And then tomorrow it's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. But it's just bullshit mm-hmm. it, to yourself. And I woke up one day and I said, I'm going to the fucking gym at 5.30 every day. And I don't care if my leg is chopped off. I'm making it to the fucking gym. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And I just, I half the time I'm like driving half asleep. I'm like, but I, I make it there <laughs> and I get to the gym. I do 10 minutes of cardio. I stretch for 10 minutes and then I hit a workout. And then by 7 a.m. when I'm done, I have my entire day ahead of me. So I said I was going to do it for 100 days. But I did it because I specifically wanted to get out of a, a terrible routine and create a very solid ritual, like mm-hmm. a very ha- habit, really. Yeah. And I think it's just going to become forever. Like, I'm, I'm just going to not stop ever. I would add to that, you know, one thing you called out with the end of the day stuff, what makes it tough is not only your schedule, you know, your day gets crazy, but also the gym is fucking packed at the end of the day, man. You might not be able to get all yeah. you want done or now your one hour lift is turned into an hour and a half or two because you're waiting or whatever. That's annoying. But morning's a way to go but like you said it's super tough to wake up or just you're driving there half asleep i was watching a couple of videos i think his name is justin waller and he's like you know just by getting up sometimes i get what i call an accidental pump mm-hmm. and it's like you know it might be a shit lift but by the end of it even if going into that you were half asleep or you weren't feeling 100 percent, by the end of that lift you're feeling awake you're feeling ready to yeah. go you're feeling ready to attack the day so even if it was only 70 percent or 80 percent, it's still better than not going at all no one is is mm-hmm. super thrilled about waking up at my first alarm goes off at 450 i get up out of bed i'm trying to get out of bed around you know five right so i don't know anybody that's like super excited to get out of bed every single day seven days a week at that time i think there's definitely circumstances but Every single day, there's just it's just not happening. Yeah. But you have to do it, and and then you create that habit. I always like uh, looking at the pictures from Jocko when he posts the 4:20 on yeah. his watch, yeah. like or whatever time it is in the morning, 4:30. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. seal life right there. Yeah. But to your point, Kenny, like the transformation, what you're doing right now, like it's awesome. It fires me up. I know it fires us up. Like one thing that's the best is when you guys are all on your shit. Like, that's what juices me up. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's get our shit together. Let's get after it. Because it's also it's just being accountable, like having an accountable partner, someone pushing you and having those people around you. That's the one thing. But, dude, you have to get in the morning. You have to get out there in the morning. Now, listen, prior, priorities will probably change when kids and whatnot come. But, yeah, you'll get up earlier to do it. Yeah. Mornings are always the best. You just feel so much better throughout the day. And you know what? It's like, I don't know about y'all, but when you do push it to the afternoon, you always have that thought in your head. Mm-hmm. You're like, damn, I still got to work out. And you have a thousand other priorities. I know some of you guys with your schedule afternoon sometimes does work. But in your – just like what you said, dude, 5 to 7 p.m. with work, I don't know what could happen, right? Whether it be yeah. putting out fires, this and that. You um, have to look at your schedule and see – mentally, you have to make sure that the, the time that you're going is a time frame – when you could reduce the amount of excuses for yourself. I know later in the day, every hour that passes throughout the day, an excuse just continues to build. And at the end of the day, I have 50 reasons why I shouldn't go that day. But in the morning, if it's the first thing, what excuse do I have? Get tired. Out of the way. Right. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Yeah, you you're can. gonna be you're gonna be tired if you sleep another hour. Then you're yeah. gonna be draggy anyway. And it's gonna set your day behind. And then you're gonna be stressed because you know you got all these things you have to do. And then it's just a real reoccurring thing, an issue. Going to like having someone to, to work out with. So James and I, like we said earlier, post college, we live close enough where we're able to, you know, be accountable for one another. But I think one I mean, let me know if you agree. I think one of our biggest struggles was, like Kenny said, sports through Stetson, through high school, the program was always meant for us. And mm-hmm. then we get out of that. And it's like my mentality was I'm a college athlete. I don't need a trainer. Yeah. I'll figure out what to do. And then I, we found ourselves, we were Googling celebrity workouts. <laughs> James was making up stuff on the fly. Like James landed us on Steve Cook, and that's been huge for at least me. But yeah. for it was tough just trying to figure out what you're going to do. Like we did Sylvester Stallone, Google. We did Arnold Schwarzenegger, and there were some Google. Good lifts. There, there were. Some good lifts. But just that's the level it took for us to figure out the program. Yeah. That's a good point. Also, like – We've been programmed for so long where it was always 
told and given to us of what we had yeah. to do. Right. That was like one of the that, biggest struggles graduating from college and getting into the workplace. Like, wait, well, I can wake up and yeah. go to bed whenever I want. I don't got to be at this class. I don't got to be at this workout at this time. I don't got to be yeah. at this team meeting. Right. And you're just like, yeah, I'm working an eight to five job. But we were doing that in college, especially with sports and whatnot and all the extracurricular activities we had in clubs and organizations we were running and leading. But that was a big struggle. And that's kind of why that first like year or two we were talking about in the past, like how much weight I gained. The one mm. thing, though, that you have to think about is like when you're looking at those plans, those plans for basically from when we started sports at a young age to, you know, in our young tw our 20s. Those plans were sculpted for the athlete that we were, right? So to be able to have power and be able to have uh, an endurance system. Explosion. Yeah. Because football. And so you have to look like, do you need that at 30? Like, I'm not I'm not tackling anybody on the field at 35. No. You know, I'm unless you're to, in the NFL, right? Trying to tackle some uh, emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um no, I, yeah. I, I, you guys bring up a lot of great points, um, and and I uh, just want to add a couple of things. Uh, a, a lot of what's been going on in the fitness world lately, there's been a lot of science that's starting to be the lights being shed on it. So, like, um, for instance, you guys talking about the morning stuff and like you feel better afterwards. Well, that's because exercise is one of the tools that can help your brain flush out a chemical that it releases to help you sleep. And once that chemical is flushed out, you're finally awake. You have better alertness and then you're able to start your day and, yeah. and think harder and actually access those things in your brain that you need rather than relying on coffee to wake you up. We love um, I know we, we love coffee. Love yeah, love I, you're so right though, James. I have found Cheers to coffee, boys. Porch. I'm almost done with my coffee. Yeah. But. Two espressos and here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Hot Takes where we talk about debatable topics. And today's debatable topic is going to be presented by... Johnny, we're going to pull a card. Today's hot take. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Yes. No. So the question is stated the most important. Unlike Ryan, I know you enjoy breakfast. I could eat breakfast all day long. I could eat breakfast for breakfast, eat breakfast for lunch, breakfast for dinner, just all day. Big breakfast guy. Absolutely. I just, I don't think there's a lot of volume in breakfast. There's not a lot of Bacon. things that you could eat. So I don't, I don't like breakfast because of what is available for breakfast. I like it because I, well, I don't even really like it. I do it because I, it is the most important meal of the day because what you consume at that point in time is going to help you throughout the rest of the day. And when you eat dinner, although I love dinner, that's going to sit in your system through the nighttime and when you sleep. And I don't think that's the most important. I think the most important is prior to all of the engagement and activity that you do during the day, which would be breakfast. So I think it is the most important. Wrong. Eh. Why? Okay. Eh. There's actually starting to come with a lot of uh, uh, research on this right now that uh, intermittent fasting actually is better <laughs> for that. And so skipping breakfast, and making lunch your first meal, uh, there's a better uh, short-term benefit on improved focus and long-term uh, benefits when using intermittent uh, fasting. I, I got have a done, question. I for have you, done James. intermittent fasting. Here's the problem with that: when you wake up in the morning and you go exercise, you don't consume before you exercise, you don't consume after you exercise, and you don't eat for extended periods of time. Now, what happens? So, so here's the here's the caveat. Um, I, I don't disagree with you. You probably need some sort of nutrition in the morning. Um, so breakfast, no, not breakfast. Not like I don't like making eggs and bacon, and all that stuff. Actually, you supplement it with ath like, like athletic greens or, uh, you, you yeah, just say lacks, some kind of super lacks nutritional value. What are you talking about? Lacks nutritional value. Oh, it has 25 grams of protein. It has carbs. It has everything you need. No, you no, actual no, it doesn't have those things. So it However, lacks nutritional value. It, well, all right. Nutritional yeah. value. It's literally super greens. It's it's actually great for your gut health and all. I those I take greens right now. I know you do. I know you do. And it's so great. essentially, you get you get some sort of intake of nutrition, athletic greens. You get it uh, hey, so that way you can support you for the for the morning piece. But 
then you you add all these improved focus and all that kind of stuff by doing the intermittent fasting and having your first meal later on in the day. One yeah, question. But, uh, one you, question. Good. Intermittent fasting. So when you all have kids, you're gonna have them intermittent fast and skip breakfast. No, you're gonna fucking feed your kids in the morning so they have something to start their day. It's different. No, it's not. It's, it's most. How important. old are we talking? How old are we talking? Are we talking five, five six, eight, seven? ten, twelve? I didn't eat breakfast when I grew up. When I was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Like I, before school, you never ate anything. No fruit, I, no I smoothie, no nothing. To be honest, I preferred not to eat breakfast. I just was never a big breakfast guy. One because, again, like the only breakfast items I liked was like bacon and sausage and all the the bad stuff. You probably yeah. should delicious. Eat. Yeah, it's great. It's delicious. But for someone who has been on this fasting intermittent thing for what a year now. The 16-8 model works the best for me. I've also gone 20 hours without eating and whatnot. But to your point, I think breakfast in the morning is one of those things where it's just been programmed since we were young. Like yeah. when you go to the cafeteria, the got milk sign. Like, yeah, get your healthy breakfast. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just don't necessarily believe it's the most important as we maybe say it does. And with some of the research, I think it's debatable. I think that uh, there's a direct correlation between your activity levels and the times that you should be consuming food. And if, if you are someone that wakes up and does nothing, then fine, intermittent fast, because you're not you're not exerting energy and you're not losing any type of value by not consuming. But if you wake up and you hit the gym or you exercise and you're exerting energy and you're creating, uh, basically your, your body is in dire need of nutritional value, then no, I think that that is not the correct way. And I have done both. So I have tried to exercise and not consume on an intermittent fasting schedule and have felt like ass. Okay, but wait. How, how, I, need to, I need to break this down a little bit here. Are you doing a big meal before you go wake up? Like I'm talking about an egg sandwich with grits and like all – or are you just having like a banana before you work out? No, I'm not even talking. I, I don't need anything before I work out. Same. After I work out. Okay, so you're looking for it afterwards. Yes, after. Okay. Which is still breakfast because it's 6.30 in the morning. And it's not always a big meal. Like you said, it could be a smoothie. It could be fruit. It could be uh, What I, I do eat the same thing every day. Egg whites. Uh, sometimes I'll mix in a protein like steak, and then I do a carb. Usually carbs are like breakfast potatoes or something like that. So um, basically eggs. Babe, <laughs> it's breakfast. <laughs> I mean, it's eggs and a meat. And, and it's delicious, and, baby. And carb. Well, the reason why I'm going on the focus thing for the intermittent fasting is because when you eat food, your body has to digest it. It's working hard to do that. It slows you down. It can get you a little lethargic. Yes, later on, it could have some benefits. But the focus portion, like to actually have attention, you don't need breakfast. And the, the, the hot take is on whether or not it's import, the most important. I think all meals are important. Whether you want to have breakfast or not does not mean that it's the most important thing because there is research and successful testing on the fact that intermittent fasting does work. Food in general is necessary. I would Nutrition like to, is necessary. I would like to look at an, uh, an activity schedule based off of intermittent fasting. And again, I've played both ends of these, these spectrums. But if you are intermittent fasting and you're consuming your largest portions of, of food at the end of the day, and your concern is that it's going to slow you well, down, I eat make throughout you tired. the day, not the end of the day. Listen, I eat. I eat all the time. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'll eat breakfast. I will. I just, I have noticed that intermittent fasting is better for my When you eat breakfast, why do you eat breakfast? Because I'm just fucking hungry. Because it's, it's the most natural, fucking important meal no, of the day, No, it's a natural um, body response. I, I'm hungry. Do you, when do you work out? Mornings or nights? I've been doing mornings in the last three weeks. So after, I used to be so a night workout guy, So before and after though. you work out in the mornings, you just consume nothing? No, I said sometimes I'll eat. If I'm just overwhelmed with hunger, because I love food. I fucking love food. But again, it's not important to have it is what I'm Here's trying to say. Here's also the difficulty. It is important to have it if you are exerting all of your energy into some activity when you first wake up. Unless you, you don't want your body to repair properly. If, if that's what you're after, then that's Coffee fine. is part of breakfast. Yeah. You need that's coffee a, to survive in this it. world. <laughs> Boom. Breakfast because of the coffee. Oh is is coffee breakfast? I don't know because yes, I drink it, it all is. throughout the day. That's But you start it with breakfast. I don't know. I, here, here's my thing. So if I go for a, a five-mile run. From 6 to 7 a.m. I don't need to eat until 12, 1 o'clock. But if I'm going on a longer run or I know it's going to be a more intense workout, I'm probably going to be a lot hungrier yeah. after I get done with that workout. So, like, when I go run, like, you know, 13 miles, let's say I hypothetically did that, yeah, I want to get something in my system. But I don't know, man. I'm good till lunch. And I've done it, and I've had an increase in focus 
yes. stamina and my energy level is up. When I'm eating major meals in the morning, I find myself throughout the day being very sluggish. And again, I'm just one person. What works for me might not work for everybody, but Fair. to say it's the most important meal, debatable. My guy. Which is why we're doing it. My guy. When Let's you go, say not important. I would also it like is to important. study oh, me, Kenny, just for a to, week. Just to come back at me and say what I said, the opposite is not a good If you skip argument. breakfast, you're hungrier earlier, so you're just going to move lunch up to like 11 We're or 11.30. 11 that's basically still breakfast. Hunger, hunger is a natural body response, period, right? You, you can be hungry. And, and I think what your point is, Kenny, is that it, it depends on what kind of exercise you do. If I go for a walk and do a quick little kettlebell thing, basically a HIIT workout, I don't need substance after after the fact. Now, if I am doing a big squat day and I have really, really just torn down my muscles, yes, food can help with that recovery process. And I'm actually not as lethargic when I eat breakfast during that period of time. But again, it's not important. I think you, not have, a to necessity. Look at the, you have to look at the facts of what the consumption of micro and macronutrients do to your body after exerting energy. I fucking hate that you have a I agree. Back. I love He's that. He's educated, baby. <laughs> because, I love that. Look, look, here's I'm my, here's my thought. I'm learning about this right Johnny, now. Johnny, I am not, I agree with you. I can go on a 45 minute run. Perfect. I'm not, I am not hungry. But is that going to be providing my body with the best results post activity? Probably not. I think that your body does need, no, I know that your body does need some type of nutrients to help your body recover from the large amount of activity after. So does consuming any type of food, is it important? It's important. Is it needed? No, it's not needed, but it is important. That's the key. So how can something be important? important but not needed <laughs> please elaborate on that when, when i say that the, the the division between needed and important would important would be that it's not required it's important you should do it it's important needed would be more of a requirement it has to be done that's that's kind of what i'm saying well because of his science which also. is a perfect division between johnny's issue is it important is it is it should he do it i think he should yes is it required no it's not required he didn't die after he just went for a run so i don't know I, uh, it's worked for me. I also don't digest eggs and milk the best. So that's yeah, why that's we tums, use Tums. So Tums, Tums. But, so we're split here. No, two, two. Here's what's most what, important. What's up, man? What's most important is what Ty thinks. Yeah, so how about this? Ty, is breakfast the most important meal of the day? You know, as, as someone who really loves most every type of breakfast food, I... I, I don't I don't think it's the most important. Let's go! I think it's a you break it's a psyop. It's by Big Milk <laughs> pushing breakfast. Yes. There by Big Milk. <laughs> what are you pushing the agenda, Ty? Or what the hell's that? Ty, did you just give me a W? <laughs> James got his first W. I got my first W. He's just feeling bad. Let's go, he bro. is feeling He's feeling bad for James. Let's go. So he just gave a w I, Suck I, it, I don't eat breakfast most days and I'm I feel like that you, you not not that you don't need energy if you're working out, but you probably you've had some some calories in there from the day before. I, you, you'll live, you'll live. You don't need it. We love it, Ty. Fuck you, Ty. Throw it on the scoreboard, James. It's a myth, and uh, this this proves it's been busted. False. We're gonna do a uh, MythBusters <laughs> version. <laughs> <laughs> busted. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's a wrap. We don't know. What? <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys eat breakfast? Let us know. Yeah, let do you us think know. it's the most let important meal of the day? You let us know. First effect. Your, your body can't naturally wake up anymore. No, because you, you're, you're causing... You're relying a, on it. Almost yeah. a chemical imbalance. But yes. I only consume water and greens. That's, That's really it. it. For the first, like, Same. couple hours. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's... My guy, Andrew Huberman, has got me on that right now. Yeah, that's the. I feel like he's the one who or made it like a huge thing. I mean, yeah, he's got a lot of scientists. I mean, he's a neuroscience and and you know he's he, a beast. Yeah, he's a professor, so he's he's coming out with some great facts and really, I think, helping everyone understand f fitness, their bodies, and how you you operate and how to be a better, just how to operate better with your brain and and, and focus and and working out and basically the why behind all of it, right? Like a lot of people just put information out there, like. Uh, you don't have any backing behind it. So mm -hmm. at least he's putting the backing behind it, and, and it's it's great. It's a great platform. I'm learning so much. Between him on the scientific aspects of the reasoning of why and how, 
uh, your body needs to have these things in order to thrive in an mm -hmm. ecosystem. And then Jordan Peterson for that mentality of well, like when you do wake up and you're like, no, I'm just going to sleep another 15 minutes or I'm just going to sleep another 30 minutes. Getting rid of all of those bullshit excuses. Yeah. Um, or I think Bedros Koulian, he's another one. Mm -hmm. he, his stuff is like, dude, you, you have you have a mission to accomplish. And your mission cannot be diverted because you want to sleep for another 20 bullshit minutes. And you have to go do that. And that 20 minutes is going to delay your whole day. It's going gonna, it's gonna to just continue to run you down this path throughout the entire day. And then you have to have that mentality to then take a step forward. But, I mean, what are you guys doing in your, in your fitness structure like, when you work out? Well, kind of going back to the journey thing, I was going to say that like uh, when I played soccer, so it's like your conditioning, right? You, you're running all over the freaking field. So that was kind of my first thing. And I'm not a, I don't really necessarily like running, but I liked soccer and I liked competing. So that was kind of my first part of fitness because fitness isn't, it is sport as well. Yeah. But there's a lot of things you can, because you can just go do the rec leagues in, in your county or city or whatever, and, and you get exercise out of it. It's basically all fitness really is. But then obviously... Um, I came into football uh, around middle school. Um, now there was always this question I was, cause I always wanted to work out and like be in the gym, but I always thought, and I don't know if this is true or not. I don't have any research behind it, but I always thought that lifting young stunted your growth. And so I just avoided the gym in middle school, just, you know, focused on whatever football practice I had essentially. Anyone else do that? I did. I've, heard the same and like follow the same stuff or i heard the same but i i i would say i started actually lifting strategically probably freshman year but i mean maybe of in, high school of high school okay. Okay. but maybe yeah. in like eighth grade so right on the cusp yeah. of that but i did hear that i, I did this summer going into high school so same. in middle school yeah. i did a lot so i played traveling basketball like aau and we used to do a lot of like work with like resistance bands, like yes. push ups, like body weight stuff. No yes. like actual physical like Which is that's yeah, yeah, that's good. I, I right agree. And, and that's that's kind of more along the lines of what I understood is don't don't put weight because essentially if you close the like growth plates, then uh, because of the weight you wouldn't be able to grow to your what you should have grown to. Mm -hmm. um, and in sport, height plays a big factor. Yes, so I'm does. sure a lot of people yeah. would be worried mm -hmm. about that. So 100%. anyways. Um, middle school, uh, my, like you said, the structure that uh, you have, um, going to St. Thomas, uh, they had a program where freshmen were able to come in, in the summer leading into their, um, to coming into school. So I got to meet some guys beforehand, which was awesome. It was a great experience. Um, uh, coach Casulo, he was, he was fantastic. Um, but we had a strength trainer at, um, high school in high school. So he set everything up, mm -hmm. uh, Robbie Asadi and, uh, I mean, that was my first time I got into a gym and started throwing around some weights, and I was skin and bones, a little twig. And so you look love. like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said it, not me. I um, but anyways, that's when I fell in love with with working out. I, I think it was the camaraderie that you can build with working out with someone. The you can see the growth happen. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what made me hook. It's it's like. It's not instant reward because it is a it's a lifelong journey, fitness, uh, working out and working on your body and, and those kind of things. But you can see, especially at a young age, because what do they call it newbie gains. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Ryan, you still get those, right? <laughs> um, my pea shooters, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was it was awesome, and I could see how it affected my actual. And I was a, I was a kicker, so I could see how working out started to get me the strength to be able to kick the ball farther. And so I was like, wow, this yeah. is amazing. This is a fantastic tool. Um, I'll, I'll kind of stop there before we go into college because we all kind of experience college together. But I, I'm curious yeah. about your guys' journey and when you started to actually work out. And did everyone have a um, like a strength and conditioning coach in high school? Yeah, well, I did. Too. Mm -hmm. that, that was a, a key component to probably everyone's aspect of like working out and getting into fitness when you're in sports because – he was there and like sports just rotated out of that, that uh, fitness facility. Mm -hmm. And we were in a small public school and they still have that. And that was a tremendous tool that they had. So I hope every, every high school has that. One thing that I kind of regret a little bit looking back is in high school, I wanted to just experience it all. So I was kind of jack of all trades, master of none. I played football. I then went right into basketball season. I then went right into track. So I didn't really have a lot of off season 
lifting like the entire school year i was just doing jumping from sport to sport to sport so while i got to experience oh. all of that that was awesome that was com- that wasn't common i That's, did i did that too so i, I didn't lift as much wrestling. as a result of it I though was one sport i yeah. went from football you were one sport i went from football to wrestling to lacrosse and then once i figured out i was going to college for football i switched lacrosse for track well i guess for me that two of the three sports is a lot of between basketball you don't have to be like huge for that and for track you're just running the whole time so yeah but those like you being a multi-sport athlete it's so funny to say i love it <laughs> um like that only benefited you in the long run like, in, the, in the long run track yes. it's only going to help you with your speed like it's going to only help improve you running routes as a receiver and, but i look like, at it for my like i think what one thing that hurt me in college might have been my size and i probably mm-hmm. missed out on some opportunities there if i would have been I didn't turn into a one sport athlete until going into senior year where it was like of the three, okay, I have the best chance at football. Let me hone in on that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, but I enjoyed my high school experience because I got to experience all of that. So it just, you know, it's, I don't know how factual no, your no. multi high school experience. That's right. I did go to three high schools. In four I don't years. know how it's factual fine. this is, but I, I like, isn't for like division one, like athletes, like the standard, like most of them were mult, like I believe played so, more yeah. than one yeah. or two sports. Yes. Yeah, I don't know I, about more like than hot. two. I feel like it was two. I don't know. Well, here, here's two, another but thing. It's two, two sports. It's still, yeah. In in the South, because it's it's warmer all year round. Yeah. Like, I can't play football all That's year round. That's true. I mean, like, we our last football game every year was Thanksgiving, and then that was it. That season was done. And we didn't have spring ball, like, or anything. Really? Like, no, that didn't yeah. exist. Not, not, I mean, maybe in deep private schools or something, but we didn't have that. Okay. It was just literally a fall football season. That was it. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, you went to you went to – you know, start practicing in maybe mid July, end of July. We had a summer workout plan for football right. once we, you know, for for the athletes. But um, no, like once that season mm-hmm. ended, you didn't come back till summer next year. Yeah, I'm thankful to. I went to a high school where like like lifting was it, what it was known for, which is cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like awesome, I didn't man. do like I wasn't in like weightlifting, you know, like on the team those. Men and women, they, I mean, I think between both men and women, there's like 50 state championships we have. Holy Dude, so that's like, sick. Yeah. And luckily for me, like when you have like the fundamentals, yeah, like that only helps your weight go up anyway. So, so like you're... clean and jerks, like in, in, I was doing that in high school and I learned the fundamentals, like bouncing the bar off your, your legs. Like that's why it was always one of my best lifts in college. And it only yeah. got better because of our strength and conditioning program. Right. But I went in there knowing the fundamentals, which was very helpful, and I'm thankful for that experience. And but I do wish I would have actually joined like the weightlifting team because it would only made me bigger and I wouldn't be so small. So your high school had like a competitive, <laughs> we- a competitive weightlifting team. Yeah, yeah. Florida is pretty big. Yeah, for- I didn't that was- we didn't have it in my high school, but I, I I don't think it's actually like there's a lot of them. Oh, there's but- a lot of them. Is there? Yeah, mm-hmm. huh. there's a lot. Wow. Well, we didn't have it at, at St. Thomas. I never even heard of it until like now. St. Thomas it's Aquinas, cool. folks. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, you, you guys just won state it. championships in football, dude. You guys yeah. national. Yeah. Oh, thank national, you. Thank national. you for that. The Fugazi Jeez. national championship. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, but we didn't with UCF. Just kidding. Wow. Yeah, oh it's a, we claimed it. Um, no, it's not. a great school. Um, Terrible. St. Thomas is a great school. No, that's that's cool. Because so to your point, right? You got to do the the cleans and jerks and all that stuff. We didn't focus in on that until after our senior season was complete and everyone was getting prepped for college. Really? Because we all knew, all the all the coaches knew, you guys are going to need to know how to clean and jerk and hang clean and power clean and, and do all those things, snatches and whatnot. So a lot of our, our lifts, they didn't focus on that type of explosion, even though it probably would have helped us. They structured our fitness to do the the supplemental lifts that kind of lean into like, like a mm-hmm. snatch with a dumbbell, right? You still get the, the triple extension and all that kind of stuff. However... Um, we weren't truly doing a clean jerk. And I think it's more because of injuries. Uh, when you don't know how to do it, I think they didn't want to have to go through a whole clinic and try and teach everyone how to do that. So we did that after our senior season. We were getting prepped for uh, college. Hmm. That's like, interesting. Yeah. They, and we That's were, cool, um, though. Yeah, it was, it was fun because um, like, we were able to get our strength and conditioning coach outside of his um, – commitments to the actual new team that had to you know take on the tradition and keep it going he would work with us on the side and be like hey this is how you do it blah 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 um and we had a lot of we had a couple of different strength and conditioning coaches. we had one guy from rutgers that came through and he was freaking awesome that's awesome um cool. but yeah yeah nice i mean you 
your high school is a real deal. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's it's a college in some yeah. cases, <laughs> like legit. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but then obviously, so we, we go from high school and we, we all went to the same college. Mm-hmm. Um, go Hatters. And <laughs> Hatters it's, it's funny Hatter how Nick. we... <laughs> go green. Fight white. <laughs> um, it's funny how... What's a Hatter? How Sorry. integrated Still those... figuring it out power and, and Olympic lifting movements are for college sports because now you're finally able to get the hips and the explosion in, which is basically everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, the speed that a change from high school to college is insane. And it's all because I, I would say because of these things, not just because you know, obviously you become better at your sport and everything too, but um, the, the, the lifting that the weight rooms where a lot of championships can be won. For sure. Yeah. Those Olympic lifts are important. Um, mostly because of the explosion element yeah. of it, right? Like when you're doing a hang clean. Fast twitch muscle you know, fibers. Cleans, and... jerks, deadlifts. Obviously, your 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 power lifts are your bench clean, or your bench squat and deadlift, but there's a, there's Olympic lifts are super important for mm-hmm. any position. I don't and know. The, and the gyms just got nicer when we got to college. I know. Yeah. Oh, more the backwards, equipment. I love backs, equipment. Yeah. I could go on hours for talking about equipment. We know. We're we can see the that. excitement in your face. We're not <laughs> jitters. Oh. And sometimes I think I'm more excited about the equipment coming and not the actual lift that I have to do. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just got two new kettlebells. I'm really excited about it. Um, post-college, though, I mean, you know, we've talked. Number one, I think we all have acknowledged the struggles of just everyday life, you know, between job, outside responsibilities, finding time. I think we all understand that pretty thoroughly on how difficult it can be we're not saying we're experts but Mm -hmm. it is a challenge um i'm impressed specifically like we had a conversation i believe in Asheville with your soon-to-be father-in-law because he does the ironman races and Mm -hmm. he he just won like for his age group yeah Yeah. it's and it's incredible he's how old is he he's in his 50s in his 50s and he's probably i think we said he's in better shape than us yes so that's something that I think motivates me. Setting the bar high. It, it does. <laughs> because, you know, it just shows that there's levels that we can all evolve to um, just staying on this journey. Like you said, because yeah. it's a lifetime journey. It's going to evolve. It's going to change. Yep. 100%. And I, and I think the evolve piece goes to what you were talking about earlier, where we were trying to figure out what were we going to do now? We don't have the programming anymore. So we had to go find the programming. Um, I, I actually, towards the end of my college career, decided to make my own program. I took all the information that I learned from high school and college, all the lifts that we had on paper, and I basically fused it into my own program. And I've had some pretty great success with it, with other people too doing it. I've done weight loss journeys with some people and uh, improved uh, building muscle and different strategies on that with how I built the program. But yeah, we did the celebrity lifts. We did a couple apps. uh, Bodybuilding.com had some uh, Mm -hmm. stuff that we were able to download again. It was Steve Cook. And then we now... Uh, looked into the fitness culture app, which is again from his company. Amazing, so many different. Lists. It's really good because it, a lot of these, um, the fitness industry is kind of changing and understanding. Not everyone's going to lift for ninety minutes, right? So it's cool to have the option to reduce that lift from a ninety to sixty to thirty and have that option. And it's the not thinking about it factor yeah. that I think helps you get into the gym mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if you have to figure out what am I going to do today, it makes it harder to want to go to the gym. If Definitely. you know what you're going to do. And you just stick to the plan, you know, and and again, evolve because you try the program, you do the eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it ends up being. And then you try something new maybe after that if you didn't like it or you come back to it. Yeah. I think two things. One is in terms of just fitness in general, it's not just about the gym. Not everyone has to be a gym junkie, right? Go for a walk, go for a run, go for a bike ride. We did swimming. I almost drowned. Try swimming. Yes, that was hysterical. (laughs) Um, But try it all. See what fits. And then... um, shit forgot my take well oh i remember now sorry sir um you know when you get outside of college i think at least the struggle for us was we always were working towards winning like for yeah. our sports and then we're no longer athletes True. what why are we doing this figuring out your why figuring out what are those new goals going to be is it weight loss is it motivation just that is a challenge in itself of okay why am i doing the lift because that could impact how much you're putting into the, if you're just lifting just because i've always done it versus working towards something yeah. You know, overall you better dis- health yeah you got to decide that it's always good yeah i mean and it's hard i think as you're older because you don't need to you don't have that end goal right the end goal is like you said ryan winning a championship in football right and you know that you have to have uh, bigger explosive lifts in order to accomplish that goal but then when you go to the gym at you know after 
college or post athletic career, you don't have that end goal. It's just going to the gym and it becomes very mundane and it becomes very hard to see yourself in a position where, okay, I'm working towards X, Y, and Z because you're either by yourself or you just don't really have that end goal. It's just completely gone. So now you have to find that reasoning. So well, you, you got to be able to, at one point, if you're really trying to go like a fitness journey, whether it be getting up and just going on a 15 minute walk every morning, there has to be that, that switch mentally for sure. Like you got to get to a place where first you want to identify like, Hey, I want to fix the problem. And then two, you got to get into a headspace where you want to do something about the problem mm -hmm. and just get better. And listen, I think a lot of people also are intimidated Yes, because of where they're at in their fitness journey or where sure. they're at in their journey overall, which it's okay. Just start. I think one thing something. that, probably that's overlooked is like overall the gym community or the fitness community are some of the most empowering people yeah. and they will be the most helpful individuals. And that's something that I think social media has done very well mm -hmm. at pushing that type of I'd content agree. out. Um, I mean, we've all talked about the individuals who we follow and whatnot, which is cool. Um, and that's kind of what got me into to running, just doing something different, but yeah, it's a good point. I think in terms of finding the goal and motivation, James, you've done a pretty good job of this, but just, Going back to Johnny, how having someone to go through that journey with, with the fitness competitions, you know, through different, we're not on the same locations, but through different apps, yeah. we're able to stay connected, push each other, compete with each other. I think that's helped us get yeah. out of funk sometimes. Yeah. Thank you, technology. I mean, I'm staring at the the board Ty's got up. It's got, a, it looks like it's got an Apple watch on. <laughs> Great choice, yeah, Ty. Thank this you. This thing is fantastic yeah. because it tracks all the, all the metrics that you can need to try to compete with your friends. There's a couple other apps out there that you can use to build competitions. Um, and it's fun. You know, you get to talk shit. It almost kind of brings us back to at least the college days. Cause I mean, even, even when we're doing PRs, like, yes, we all want to succeed as a team, but we definitely talk shit about who's lifting more than the other. It's competitive um, spirit, baby. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, the competition and having a, a quote unquote, I would call it a virtual workout partner. In yeah. That case, Cause right. You keep it. It's accountability at the end of the day. Um, and it's, it, I, I like it. I think we're going to bring it back. It's been a little bit of a time where we've kind of went away from that for a little bit, but I'm I think we're going to bring that back. Idea. Yeah. No chance. Fuck you. No, you're yeah. not. No chance. Would you say you're undefeated? No, no. Yeah, you're undefeated. Yeah, Johnny just walks around seven hours. <laughs> right so here's the thing though. I, there's two My points on that. <laughs> One is I think long sighted. Yes. A fifth, a 14 day or whatever. We do 30 day challenges. We do seven day challenges. Mm -hmm. I think long sighted. That's really good. But short-sighted too, I look at my watch on a daily basis and I, I calculate the, the a level of activity that I'm doing. So depending on my workout, I will have higher or lower activity levels. But one thing that I do is I have a treadmill under my desk in my office and I'm st specifically focusing on getting 10,000 or more steps in per day. Yep. So when I'm running on the cardio day, obviously my steps are just really high. I'll hit like 15,000 steps. But on like my, you know, just regular squat day or something, I won't hit that many. So then I have to put more walking in, in the office, but highly recommend the, the, the treadmill during the day. If you have a stand and sit desk or what you can also do is incorporate a walk after dinner. Super important to, to do that. It helps with digestive processes. It also helps with just toning down things and then not letting your last meal of the day just sit in you until you go to bed for the next what 10 hours right from dinner to to the next time you wake up so i short-sighted look at those analytics i love going for walks, walks are i know you like patty like, and i do that a lot. yeah we like, do that a you lot. got i think actually like you and patty kind of inspired Bray and i to start just going for walks more and more and more which we like make normal daily habit now nice. yeah and when the we last, do like, that six months i mean it, you're accomplishing a fitness goal you're spending quality time, time. Your, with your significant other. You're bonding. Like, you're literally just walking around talking. I mean, it's it's a great thing to do. I mean, we, for a couple. For work, we just did a steps challenge. So I, I know nice. every campus is different. But not only at home with your significant other and love that, but, like, have a meeting. Have a one-on-one -on -one just as a walk, right? Have a conversation with the colleague. Oh, and yeah. instead of doing that on Teams or just going walk from the desk, let's go let's take a 10-minute walk. You're now, you know, you're getting your steps in. You're having that conversation. You're out. Um so 100% huge benefits. It's a great idea. I wish Lake Eola was closer to our offices, Johnny. <laughs> We're sweating. I know. Bold it's hot. It's hot. Yeah, that's, there. that's the other part, too. Like midday walk. <laughs> you come back, yeah. you guys are just 
drenched in sweat. But post lunch, I, I think I might actually start instituting some sort of walk after lunch because I'm always lethargic after lunch, and then eventually, like around two o'clock, I start to pick up my my work. But produ- productivity comes back. Well, Do any that. of you have the standing sit desk? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, you can the one where it's like your your whole desk goes up. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Get the treadmill, dude. Go go look at my one. It's the awesome. only problem is is now I have a work set up in both my house and the office and yeah. it's just it's a lot so anyways um i want to go back to what ryan was saying um yeah oh you uh <laughs> and and johnny you were alluding to this too like you can try different things so like yoga and pilates has been a big thing that i've started to look into more stretching johnny i know you you with the stretching lately um massive car- cardio has been more important to me uh the why which we were talking about earlier has changed for me to i want to work more on functional fitness because i'm looking for longevity and health primarily because of my kids Mm -hmm. right i want to be able to hang out with them pick them up and not worry about throwing my back out um i want to be able to do sport with them expect way well into my 50s and hopefully 60s too um, and that's also the reason why I have a home gym is because I want them to be able to see, Hey, dad's in the gym. He's working out. Like this is something you should consider in your life and, and make it an integral part rather than going to a commercial gym, being away from the family. I get to spend more time with the family. Now, granted, I don't have kids yet. That's my plan. I got this from uh garage gym reviews from coop. Uh, but, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of my why now. So, um, but yeah, I've changed. I'm doing kettlebell workouts now. I love kettlebell workouts. Uh, Johnny, you got to see that this they morning. Get I did. Kettlebell workouts are tough. They're awesome. They're, They're awesome. great workouts. The functional movements. I, I your body's not meant to sit in a chair all day. No. no. And Punch so to back. be able to twist and turn and yeah. Let's talk about one thing that hasn't changed for your fitness journey. You and your foam roller since I love recovery. I love recovery. <laughs> This man brings his foam roller with him on trips. He brings golf it course. on the golf course. Hold about probably what six, seven. He's on there rolling. Depends on the day. Foam Guys, you got a water jug. He does. I do, and it's cool. It is. It's it is fantastic. Cool. Well, you get on it a plane and and you're all tight and whatever. Especially if you go like from. You have not foam rolled on a plane. Never yet. have I been. No, like no, 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 no. It's no, after. No, after. Just it gets off the tarmac, just straight in the. He just in hold the on. aisle rolling it <laughs> Hold, hold, hold on. Like, what the Captain, please on wait. I need a foam roll. I don't want to fall back into the... The seatbelt light is now off. Please continue your <laughs> foam roll. <laughs> James is in the aisle just rolling his leg. Oh, up. God. You guys suck. Oh, man. No, uh, I love the foam roll. I, yeah. The, company, the percussion massages are cool, too. You guys have those? No. The, the gun, the percussion massage. Uh, oh, no. Yes. Yeah, a... Awesome. Yeah, you got one? They're great. They're really good. Um... I love I mean, the uh, sauna though. I, yeah. I love the percussion massagers, but I, I go in the sauna um, when I can. I go in steam room and sauna, but sauna is at my gym. And sauna really over know. steam room for, for sure. sure. Yeah, you can get both great, but sauna all day. Yeah. Anytime I'm uh, at our gym, it's sauna, steam room, jacuzzi. Our gym. Up. I still haven't seen it at our gym, man. Every morning I walk in. When I'm you, like, what time do you usually get there? I mean, you've only been going there for. I've only been going for a week. <laughs> all right, but, yeah, just switch. <laughs> Maybe I can't look. Never mind. Um, I come about six. Okay. So I look. I look. I said, "This today is going to be the day." I see John I in a down. week. In a week. Uh, two weeks. I went two weeks twice this past. Like I went to the actual gym because right? you know I got the good old Planet Fitness uh, place right there next. We're to gonna have that moment where we see each other, buddy. Well, you just let me know. That's there by five thirty, five forty-five. Something that Johnny just said, which is interesting, is finding the right gym for you. Yeah. That's important. Like, there's some gyms, they're just not for me. Like, I, I'm not a Planet Fitness guy. No. I'm not. I'm not a um, F45 got, guy. I'm not. You got Crunch. You got 24-Hour Fitness. You've got... Orange uh, Theory. You, I mean, those. There, there's some of those... Orange, orange Theory is big. Those places where they have, like, the... Expensive. Yeah, but, I mean, but, Orange Theory, F45, yeah. um, CrossFit, they all have, like, these structured programs, which is great for some people. Mm-hmm. Good old LA Fitness. I home, just love home how Planet gym. Fitness has like uh, the candies when you leave. I'm just like, we're at a gym. Like, why are there candies? Like, just sitting at the front of the uh, science. Different, different, different style, different Listen, atmosphere. I, I'm gonna get you guys eventually there, but gar- garage gyms, home gyms, baby. What's I'm gonna build that. At? What's yeah, yours called? You got shirts and the stuff. Sweat so, box, baby. Oh, I should. It's a cool mine. name. It's a cool name. Let me. I think when it comes to like 
timing and whatnot. Like yes. it's only it only helps. I just like the fact of like having to get out and go somewhere in a way. And it kind of gives me that five to ten minutes of just like get my mindset. I agree. Just to get out of the house. But yeah. so, dude, it's so, so convenient having your gym. Like what I you know. got is sick. Yeah. Well, so that was kind of the thing, right? Um, I was worried I wouldn't like it because of that. Getting the mindset like I'm going to the gym. Kind of like a reason why I like going to an office is because I, I'm going to the place that I'm going to work. Like that's what I'm that's what it's there for. I can't mix it with I mean my freaking laundry is right next to me. And I, I'll, I'll turn it on while I'm working on working out. Like I'll bring clothes in and <laughs> throw it in at 6 a.m. while I'm getting my lift in and just let the laundry go. You know, but it goes back to Kenny's excuse thing. I have no excuse. It's there. I've spent the money on it. I go. Yeah. And it helps me, you know, get in the gym because I, you paid all this money. You have it. Why are you not using it? And when I go through the garage and I go out to my truck and I'm not using that gym, just pisses me off and gets me back into the into the mode. So, James, yeah. tell the people about your Felaton, baby. The Felaton. Uh, you know, it's just Pelotons are really expensive. Uh, you guys all have a Peloton. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's it's cool. Like, I, I definitely, you know, I, I'm more of the budget gym guy. I like that stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, I just got an Amazon bike, 400 bucks. Got a TV in the gym where I can, you know, I set it up with the sound bar. And, you know, I can watch videos, like YouTube videos uh, for the workouts or, or songs or whatever. Um, but, yeah, the Peloton app's on the Roku. And so I'm able to just, you know. $400 bike. I think it's like a $14 mem membership. However, Peloton's coming out with the one Peloton thing. Now I got to figure out how that's going to play <laughs> out. I think it's going to be more expensive. Um, but yeah. And, and then I got like some Bluetooth things that do the cadence and the speed on the bike uh, attached it to it. And, and it gives me all the me metrics that I need. And I can, I can do everything the Peloton can for a fraction of the price. That's why it's the Peloton, baby. It's a fake Peloton. <laughs> Makeshift Peloton. Yeah. Peltons yep. are good too. Those workouts are are serious. I hop on oh. it once in a while. Patty does it a lot more than I do because I'm going to the to the other gym. But uh, those workouts. Are I've serious. seen you on the assault bike a lot. Yeah, I get on the assault bike a decent bit. The Peloton though, here's the thing with the Peloton. With the assault bike, it's like you're just sitting there and you're going mm -hmm. like this, and I'm like, you know, when I'm doing that for a half an hour, I'm just literally just you know listening to something or there's just nothing there. Peloton is so engaging yeah. with what they're with the, the, the coaches the trainer, are great. Yeah. The like, activities, the music, I, it's so engaging. You can hit a, like Patty did a 17 mile bike ride the other night. I mean, it was like an hour, but I mean, to do an hour bike ride yeah. without the screen and without the engagement would just be like boring as shit. Unpopular opinion. I do not enjoy the trainers or it's almost like too much positivity. It's like, stop fucking telling me I'm in the middle of working out. I'm good. Like, I go with know. the music vibe. You're I put on my yeah. headphones and just oh, really? follow the, now the Prompts. Peloton was for my wife. She used it way more than me. But when I'm on there, I just don't enjoy all of the, you can do rah, this. Rah. Like, I know I can fucking do this. I'm working like I'm in the <laughs> middle of this. So I just put on my headphones and yeah. then go to my own music. But I still, you know, I have all the cadences to follow, but I know people love the trainers. So. I do the scenic route, like oh, do you? just pull the pull the scenic route up, and yeah. then I use. I either listen to like an audio book or I'll listen to like music, depending on how long it is. Yeah. But yeah, the trainers. Listen, I like Alex a lot, but sometimes he gets I'm like, all right, dude, I'm sorry, man, give me a second. They get a they get after it though. They do, yeah, and they hundred percent fucking work. work. Yeah, like really yeah. how many times are they doing that? I again? I don't understand how they can talk while they're, they're uh, that's, working out. I'm dying. I mean, that's what they do, right? Like all no, I know. Well, so they, I think they're just, their cardio levels are just that fucking high they that they can do that. Like yeah. the breathing. Yeah. So I'm, I have a big problem with breathing and working out. And, and I think it's, I need to figure that out because I might actually like pass out. Breathing is important. So I hope you do. I, I, know, <laughs> I, know. I, I don't know how to breathe properly when I'm, when I'm, when I'm exercising. Um, but anyways, I'm dying on the bike. I couldn't talk if I wanted to. There's mm -hmm. no chance. I don't know how they do that, but it's, it's I mean, I, I like the. I like the trainers. I think it helps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's different yeah. opinion. Yeah. I mean, but uh, I, a rower. Have you guys tried rowing? Yeah, Dude, rowing. I, I like rowing. Uh, Minutes Lots of two rowers are sick. They're coming up with a couple of really like more tech. So I think Peloton's coming out with a rower soon. There's mm -hmm. a, so that one's cool. Um, and then the. Uh, there's a Bowflex row, rower that's really good, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I was going to say the Ski Erg. Have you ever tried the Ski Erg? Yeah, those are awesome too. Um, I, I do like the Ski Erg, but. I only hit that like on back day. Yeah. Control the day. But anyways, uh, you know, just get your heart rate up at the end of the day. You know, find find something that you like. Pilates, CrossFit, lifting in a gym, going for walks, runs, whatever. It doesn't matter. 
um, just get out there, do something. Um, it's, it's good. It's good for your health. Invest in it. And then, uh, well, yeah. So until next time, the, the bender, bender continues. continues.